Alrighty, we are looking at 3.5 solving nonlinear systems of equations. So here, there's different ways to solve a system. Um, one way is to graph it, and we would graph these two separately. So the top one would be a parabola, the bottom one would be a line, and then we would look for the point at which they, they cross. Another method is to use substitution where you'd plug something into something else. We'd plug the, like this y value could go inside that other y value. That would be substitution to to plug in. And then lastly, we have elimination. And that would be where you take them and you, you kind of add up the two equations to make a new one. Oftentimes with elimination, one of the variables goes away. So starting off here, we want, want to go back to, to graphing. And the way that I'm going to show using class is to graph using a graphing calculator. That way we can kind of skip some of the, the long form graphing here. Um, right, we're not going to graph it by hand. We're going to use a graphing calc. So if you want to look at that, I'm going to talk about example 31 in class. Um, but that one I'm going to show you is how to, to graph using a graphing calculator. But let's look at 32. We're going to solve with substitution. So like I said, we're going to plug in. So I'm going to say that I'm going to have x squared plus 3x. Then I have minus my y. This is coming from my top equation. But my y value from the bottom is negative x plus 3. And this is all equal to 2. Distributing out, I would have x squared plus 3x plus x minus 3 equals 2. This is a quadratic equation, so I want to get him equal to 0, and I'd have x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 0. Now right here, we have a quadratic equation that we have to solve. There's lots of different ways we can solve it. Uh, one way would be to factor, and that's what I'm going to try to do. So I'm going to take negative 5, and I'm going to try to break him apart. He could break apart, and I want him to add up to be 4. So what about positive 5 and negative 1? 5 minus 1 is 4. So then I'll have x squared plus 5x minus 1x minus 5 equals 0. The beginning and the end I factor separately. The beginning I have x times x plus 5. And then at the end, I want my parentheses to match up. I want it to be an x plus 5. That means I need to pull out a negative 1 here. Then I'll have x plus 5 times x minus 1 equals 0. So x plus 5 is 0, or x minus 1 is 0 giving me x equals negative 5 and x equals positive 1. Now, graphically, I don't think I've talked about this yet, but this top one is a parabola, right, because he's got an x squared. The bottom one's going to be a plain old line. So we have some kind of situation here where, and this is not, not correct here, but we got a parabola with a line going through it, and we got two different little spots here, right? One of them's at negative 5, and then one's at positive 1. So that's why we have two of them. And now we get our actual points, right? We just have the x values, not our y values. We plug back in. So I'm going to plug back into the y equals negative x plus 3. So I'm going to have y equals negative negative 5 plus 3. That's going to be, what, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I have the point, what is that, negative 5 comma 8. There's one point where it crosses. And my other one, I'm going to have y equals negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. That's going to give me the point 1 comma 2. So again, the situation that we have here is we have a parabola and a line, and they cross at those two points there. So that there was substitution, and again, we plugged in, right? Substitution is when you plug in for something. You substitute in. 33 is elimination. Elimination is sometimes easier. Um, but one of the things that you have to always have is you have to have them in order. So we got our quadratic, our linear, our y's, our equal sign, and then our constants. They're all in line together. Now we can just straight up add them up because we have a positive y and a negative y. These two here, the top one's a parabola, the bottom one's a parabola. So it's probably going to be like a parabola meeting each other like this. Adding these up, I'm going to have negative 1 plus 2 gives me 1x squared. 5 minus 8 gives me negative 3x. Positive y and negative y is 0. And then 32 minus 4 gives me 28. 
I'm going to subtract so that this is equal to 0, and I'll have x squared minus 3x minus 28 equals 0. Now I'm going to look and see, can I factor this? So I'm going to look at my negative 28. I'm going to look for things that can break apart such that I'd get a negative 3. Uh, my first one that I'm thinking about is 4 and 7. 4 times 7 is 28, but I want it negative by about 4 minus 7. That's going to give me the negative 3. Now, I want to scroll back up to this top piece here. Um, so far in class and, and whenever we're factoring, we've always been doing these two steps right there to show how it breaks apart. Now, we can always see that the pattern is always going to be this first number that we have will come out, and the second number will be the other piece in parentheses. So if we want to skip these middle steps, that's okay. This here, I'll end up having x plus 7. Oh, excuse me, x plus 4. Well, I'll say x minus 7, and then x plus 4 equals 0. Right, the negative 7 came from over here. That was what I was factoring down to be, just like the negative 1 was over here. And then we have the 4, and I have x plus 4, just like we had the 5, x plus 5. Now I say that x minus 7 is 0, and x plus 4 is 0, giving me x equals 7, and x equals negative 4. Now I'm going to have to plug back in to get my y values. Um, normally you want to pick the easier of the two beginning problems, or beginning equations here. They both look about equally difficult. I'm going to go with the top one here. So I'm going to say negative x squared plus 5x plus y equals negative 4. And I'm going to plug in for my x. So first off, x is 7. I'm going to have negative 7 squared plus 5 times 7 plus y equals negative 4. Negative 49 plus 35 plus y is negative 4. 35 minus 49 is going to be negative 14 plus y is negative 4. And then whenever I add that 14 over, I get y equals 10. So I have the point 7, 10. 7, 10. Now I need to plug in my second value, which was x equals negative 4. So I'm going to take this, and we're going to have x equals negative 4. And oh, whenever I plug in there, I'm going to have negative, negative 4 squared plus 5 times negative 4 plus y equals negative 4. This gives me negative 16 minus 20 plus y is negative 4. Is that right? That's going to be a pretty large number there, isn't it? Yep, I'm thinking so. All right, and this is going to give me what? Negative 20, negative 36 plus y is negative 4. So y will be positive 32, right? Whenever I add that 36 over. So this is the point. Here's my x value. There's my y value. The point negative 4, comma 32. And there we go. All right, scrolling down onto 34. This one's going to be a little bit easier because we have such a simple y equals there. Also, up here it just says to solve. You solve it however you like. Uh, whenever there's a test problem or a quiz problem that just says to solve, I want to see some kind of work. So don't just do it in the graphing calculator. Um, somehow show what you're going to be doing your work by hand. Checking it with the graphing calculator, that's just fine, um, but I want to see some work. With this, I'm going to use substitution. I'm going to take the negative 3 and plug it in for the y. So we'll have negative 3 equals x plus 2 squared minus 3. I can add this 3 over, and I get 0 equals the quantity x plus 2 squared. I take my root, and I get 0 equals x plus 2. And then after that, I get x equals negative 2. Now this one's really nice because we have y equals negative 3 right there. So here's the point, negative 2, negative 3. Graphically, what's happening here, we have the line, y equals negative 3. That's a horizontal line there. 
And then this parabola is going to be right like this, where there's just that little bitty one spot that it touches, and that's the spot that we have we have discovered. So there we go, that's 34. Oftentimes when the problem starts off with a y equals or an x equals, and, and just a plain old number, you know the problem is going to be relatively easy and pretty straightforward. 35. This one's going to be a little bit harder than the other one because we don't have just a plain old like y equals 3 or y equals 5. We got a quadratic in the bottom and we got a line up top. So I am going to set these equal to each other. So I'm going to say like, well, y equals y. So negative x plus 3 equals 3x squared minus 4x plus 3. This would be using substitution. I want to get a 0 on the left, so I'll have 3x squared. Whenever I add my x over, I'll have minus 3x. Then I subtract my 3, and I'm left with 0, so I'm not going to put anything there. Now this binomial, we can factor very nicely. It'll be 0 equals 3x times x minus 1. Right? And we can check ourselves by distributing back in um, if you want to. You can check yourself like that. Now we use the zero product property to say that, well, 3x is 0, or x minus 1 is 0. The 3x equals 0 gives me that x is 0. x minus 1 is 0 gives me x equals 1. Now I need to plug back in, and I'm going to plug into the top equation here, right? It's the more simple one, the simpler. y equals negative x plus 3. If I plug in x equals 0, that's going to be y equals negative 0 plus 3, which is 3. So here's the point 0 comma 3. There's one of my two answers. Now I plug in x equals 1. That's going to give me y equals negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. So I get the answer 1 comma 2. There we be. That's 35. Let's scroll on down. 36. Once again, we have one that's relatively easy because we have this 7 right there. The y equals 7. We're just going to plug that into that y right there and then solve. And I think you guys are, are able to do that here. I'll set it up. 3x minus 6 equals 4x squared minus 7. And I'll go ahead and get us a 0 equals. 0 equals 4x squared minus 3x and then minus 1. And what I would do from here is you can factor if you want, or you can use the quadratic formula. And honestly, if it was me, I'd probably use the quadratic formula right there. I'll let you guys finish that problem. Um, let's go on and look at our next one. 37. This one here, I think I'm going to use substitution. I'm going to take this top piece, which is y, and plug it into the bottom one. So I'll have 2x minus 3 equals x squared plus y, and y is x squared plus 2x minus 3. This will be 2x minus 3 equals 2x squared plus 2x minus 3. We probably notice that the 2x minus 3s are on the left and the right side, we can subtract them both off and they cancel. And we're left with 0 equals 2x squared. So 0 equals x squared. And if you take a square root, you get 0 equals x. Nice and simple there. I'm going to take the top equation and plug in, and I'll get y equals 0 plus 0 minus 3. Right? I'm plugging in that x value. So y is negative 3. Putting this together now, we have the point 0, negative 3. And that's our answer to number 37. We notice that there's only one answer, so that's kind of neat, right? So these, the top one and the bottom one are both parabolas. So somehow they must be just barely touching each other, probably at their vertexes. They're just barely touching. All right, number 38. Right here, we can actually use elimination. That might be the easiest way. Let me rewrite these. x squared minus 5x 
minus y equals 2. And the other one, we have a negative x plus y is a negative 11. Now, even though our bottom one does not have the quadratic term, the x squared term, we can still add these up because the y's will cancel very nicely for us. So we'll be left with x squared minus 6x equals negative 9. Adding the 9 over, x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 0. And this here will factor to be x minus 3, x minus 3 equals 0. Because there's a repetition there, we're only going to have one answer. And our one answer is going to be x equals 3, right? I skipped a couple steps there. So we said x minus 3 is 0. And then we add the 3 over to get x equals 3. Now we can plug back in. I'm going to plug into this bottom equation. So we'll have negative x, which is 3, plus y equals negative 11. I add my 3 over and I get y equals negative 8. Together, this gives me the point 3 comma negative 8. And that is our answer to problem number 38. Looking at 39. Again, this one just seems very nicely set up for elimination, right? I see the positive y and the negative y. So if I add these up, Again, the bottom one doesn't have that quadratic term, so we just kind of add 0 to whatever we had. So it's going to be negative 4x squared. Then I have a 2x and an x, giving me 3x's. And then negative 7 and positive 8 gives me 1. And all that's equal to 0. Now I'm going to use the quadratic formula here. So I'm going to say x equals negative b, so that's negative 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's 3 squared, minus 4 times a, negative 4, times c, which is 1, all over 2a, and a is negative 4. The discriminant, the piece under the root, that's going to be 9 plus 16, which is 25, all over negative 8. And this gives me negative 3 plus or minus 5 over negative 8. Breaking that up, negative 3 plus 5 over negative 8. Negative 3 minus 5 all over negative 8. The bottom one here is going to be negative 8 over 8. Oh, negative 8 over negative 8, which is a positive 1. The top one is going to be a 2 over negative 8, which is a positive 1 quarter. So these are my x values here. So we have 1 fourth comma something and one comma something and we need to plug back in i'm going to plug into the bottom equation here that is 2x plus 8 is negative y i'm going to plug in the one first because that looks a little bit easier so 2 times 1 plus 8 this is the x equals 1 is negative y this is 10 is negative y so negative 10 is positive y. Now we'll plug in my x equals a quarter. That's going to be 2 times a quarter plus 8 is negative y. So 1 half plus 8 is negative y. And then if I add those up and, and make it an improper fraction, I'm going to have positive 17 halves. Is negative y right one half plus eight is 17 halves so I get negative 17 over 2 equals y and that is our answer to number 39 all right I am going to let you guys work on number oops, is there only just one left number 40 all right there we go I'll let you guys do that one on your own all of these problems are very similar to what we have done before um, we have done lots of solving systems before. This time, it's a little bit harder because there's always, or almost always, almost always, going to be a quadratic equation in the middle of it. So there was our quadratic for this one. There's our quadratic for that one. Um, this one had a quadratic right there. Um, it just makes it just a little bit more difficult. Um, so in the middle of it, there's always a quadratic there. And you'll solve by normally by factoring or using the quadratic formula. All right, that's all.